Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna run through how you can create a detailed Google Ads budget pacer, which will give you full visibility over how much you're spending versus your allocated budget. Ty, I would like you to crunch those numbers again. It's programmed, there's no such thing. Just crunch them, just crunch them, please. Better still, this pacer can be used across any PVC activity like LinkedIn ads, Facebook ads, Bing ads, whatever ad you're running. So uh, let's jump straight into it. Okay, so this is the tab with all the raw data in it. And this may not make much sense yet, but let's go through it column by column. So I can give you a bit of an oversight of what each of the columns mean and how it all works together. And then how it then can go into this sheet here, which gives us an overview of the August 2023 Google Ads month per date and how we're pacing against our current allocated budget. I do apologize for the fact that this isn't styled in any way, shape or form, but it's very much just to give you a Google Sheets mechanism of how you can apply this budget ads tracker or pacer to your work as well. So I can give you the template. Um, so first and foremost, let's just say, for example, we have a budget for our Google ads of £6,000 per month. I'll get into what the other ones uh, mean in a minute, what this graph means, but let's go over to the pacing formula and at the moment we're currently on the 15th of August so we haven't got a full month's worth of data this month but it's good to show you how this works part way through the month as well and as mentioned we've got around six thousand pounds per month for budget and everything in this column down here is pulled in from this monthly thing here so if we change it to five thousand then automatically that's all changed to five thousand take that back a sec so first and foremost is we need to make sure we start pulling this stuff in dynamically because the last thing we want to do is start going in here and pulling in how much we spend each day by looking into our different other accounts and pulling that through and this is where api extraction tools come in handy you can use api extractor tools such as supermetrics funnel.io agency analytics or you can build a custom api extraction um, but ultimately just making sure that you have access to one of these tools allows you to automate this whole process you can do it manually but something you have to manually update every day so what you can do is if we go into extensions and take one of our API extraction tools, we can launch a sidebar which integrates here with Google Sheets. And what we can do once we open one of our API integration tools is look to create a new query. So if we just call this Google Ads uh, cost, we can say we want it in cell one. We can use a campaign for one of our test sites. We use integration, which is Google Ads in this case. Um, what we can do is look at the dimensions, which will be date. With date, we also want to look at cost. So we can look at every single date and the associated cost. It's then important to remember to go ascending. And rather than doing the last 30 days, what we want to make sure that we keep updating so it renews every month and starts from the month um, that we're now on would be to go on to this month and then apply and then we can then increase the row limit to let's just put all just to make sure that we have it's only going to be 31 days maximum um, but let's just put all anyway and then what we can do is insert data and this data will then update these two rows here if you didn't do this month and you put this year rather than doing daily costs it would start doing monthly cost so if you wanted to have a, a master sheet which looked at all of your previous monthly costs and then look at the associated conversions and you know other potential metrics then you can have a really nice oversight of that as well but in this case we do it this month um, just so we can see day by day how much we're spending so we can see if we're overpacing underpacing um, and what sort of the the picture of the month and how we can adjust it in the short term so you can press insert data and that will then pull through this data here and depending on the api extractor tool that you use um some of them automatically do it every 24 hours some of them don't you need to look into the tool and provider that you're using we're pretty agnostic here when it comes to it to just work out which one works best for you but yeah the, the three best ones we found are supermetrics funnel and agency analytics um but this is just a sheets uh, sheets api plugin so let's get rid of this now so now that we've pulled in the date and the cost here, obviously every day we populate the new one. So that tomorrow the 16th will come through and the associated cost 17th. And as it goes down, it will then start changing these associated formulas, which at the moment are just set to default with the uh, formula behind the scenes. 
So we have the date, we have the cost, we have the accumulated spend. So how much we spent every day. So every day, how much is this? these two ones added together? So three days in would be the sum of all of these added together. The budget for the month, how many days of the month there are. So we can see here the day um, compared to A2. So it's self-referencing. So we can see here, this is the first. So it has the day of the month first here and also how many days in the month also self-referencing. It knows it's August, it knows it's 31 days. This is how much the expected spend should be. So this one here is actually how much the spend was. And this is one how, how much the, the expected spend should be if we were hitting the exact number every day of our budget and meeting it completely. Um, what we can see here is the budget pacing. So for example, we were 59 pounds short. So we had actually how much we spent minus C2, which was a cumulative, uh, cumulative spend. So we were 59 pounds short. So we had 59 pounds more to play with. Same with this day. You can see the third day of the month, we actually spent 55 pounds more than we were supposed to. So starting to level out. We can then see here the remaining budget. So ultimately um, how much budget we have left after each day and how many days we have remaining. This then comes in handy to look at this really important metric, which is revised budget. So say for example, what we should have spent on the first day, we didn't quite meet it. So we were saying that for the rest of the 30 days, we need to spend 195 pounds to make up the difference in the budget. And as we go further and further down, you can see that we've been under pacing. It's now gone up to, on this date here, 257 pounds because we've fallen behind with how much we're bidding. So if we want to spend that whole 6,000 pounds, rather than only spending 193 pounds a day, we need to spend around 257 pounds per day. This is really handy to have an overview of whether you need to start maybe upping some daily budgets or whether you need to start lowering daily budgets depending on if you're overpacing or underpacing in itself. This becomes mega useful. If we go to this next tab, this just gives you the overview of what's going on in a nutshell. So what we can see here is we have the monthly budget of 6,000. We have the date here, which again is self-referencing. Uh, and what's cool about this self-referencing date is we can do a V lookup against this date. So because this date here exactly matches the 8th of the 15th here, we can do a V lookup and say, what is today's revised budget that we should be going after? So you can see here the formula which therefore goes and pretty much says for this day, what is the new revised spend that we should be spending? So 257 pounds 67, which is 257 pounds 67 and how much the current spend is for this month. Now with this graph here, we literally just have the cumulative spend and the expected cumulative spend. So in red, this is how much we should be spending. And then in blue, this is how much actually we have been spending. What we can do now is obviously create Zapier integrations, for example, which can pull into Slack email to show each day and give an update of whether we're overpacing or underpacing, but also helps to say if we're having a good month and we're hitting targets and say, for example, you want to go up to 8,000 pounds per month. What is the revised daily budget, which we need to go up to and start spending and keep an eye on? Or say, for example, we're cutting back. We only want to spend 3000 pounds in one month. We know that we need to now change and pivot towards 70 pounds per month because we're massively overpacing. And every day, for example, that we add in more. So say, for example, we had 116 pounds or oh, let's go just pull this down to the 31st. And let's just say that we spent 116 pounds every day. This now has the target 4,000, sorry, 3,000. We've spent way over that. But let's go back to the 6,000 mark. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The expected spend, 6,000. We still wouldn't hit it every day. So as the days go on, obviously we can start seeing the days appear in this graph. If you guys want to have access to this, what I'll do is I'll link to this template with all the formulas within it, along with the test data in it. If you guys want to play around with it, ultimately it's just a really nice way of looking behind the scenes and making sure that you have your finger on the pulse and making sure that you're not overpacing, not underpacing. And if you have got any changes, it allows you then to go in and make those changes before any issues happen towards the end of the month when you haven't got time to spend more or spend less. Also, what can happen is every month we like to create a legacy year so we can see every month how much we've been spending, looking at the conversion data off the back of that spending and look at the average cost per lead obviously all that stuff is in your crm as well but it gives you a really top level overview of the different channels what the top line cpl is and ultimately allows you to start saying okay maybe we should look at reallocating some of this budget to a different channel which is performing better from a performance
performance marketing standpoint. Hope you found that useful. Hope it's made your life slightly easier with a bit of automation. And uh, any questions, feel free to whack them in the comments below. Until next time, guys, have a great week.